You know, mentioned it at the start, this is a bit of an eclectic mix. I feel that uh, I should put a preface my uh, sort of talk with, a, with, with a, a, a comment that I'm really here to make a plug uh, for partnerships for Creative England, um, which we think can be of benefit to large companies, large organisations, small companies across England as a whole. We're not here to um, kind of share insights in terms of industry, in terms of markets. We've heard loads of those from different areas this morning. And I'm sure we will later on in some of the workshop sessions. Our role <clears throat> as a creative industries agency for the whole of England is actually to help catalyse some of those programmes and bring SMEs and plug government funding into some of those gaps. Um, we are almost like the legacy, really, of the screen agency programme. So certain numbers of the audience might know certain uh, the network of screen agencies <coughs> across England as a whole, funded through the regional development agencies, the change of government in 2010, the demise of the regional development agencies as a knock-on, the screen agencies went as well almost by default. Um, in some areas, they've managed to survive, and and the, but in very, very similar, much diminished form. And actually, four screen agencies got together and said, we think there's still a massive opportunity here, and actually a huge need as well, in terms of the government trying to drive forward support for the creative sector in particular. So through last year, there was a huge amount of sort of to and fro as you can imagine. And then at the end of the year, there was a national agency established with, with um, support from government, although no funding. So the kind of regime has changed in terms of core funding and so on, but implicit support from government that this would be a good thing to do. There is a gap in the market, and actually government wants to see, through DCMS and biz, wants to see an agency look to support creative industries wherever it can. We don't make any profits. Um, we have uh, a, a legacy of investments from the Screen Agency program, and we also have government funding in terms of regional growth funding. So we landed some the regional growth funding at the back end of last year we're seeking to deliver through this year in the next three years. And we're also bidding in the round is next week actually for future regional growth funding uh, along with everybody else from you know Vauxhall and Ellesmere Port to Uncle, um, Uncle Tom Cobley and all. Um, we're nationally based, the major centres are in Bristol, Birmingham and Salford, Salford linked to the me media city development of the Beeb. Um, but we also have people out in Elstree and, and Nottingham and Leeds and various other sort of centres. We're about 40 strong. Um, and as I said, predominantly based around the legacy of the screen agencies, but we're actually seeking to do a little bit more than that. Um, so what the screen agencies did around talent, around location, so if you want to make something, you want to support in terms of shutting roads, in terms of getting the right crew in place, looking to film things like um, film festivals, you know, Sheffield Documentary Festivals next week, the large film festivals across England, we're getting involved with all that stuff, but as well, and probably the, the latest sort of addition to that is around business investment. We don't do grants. The days of grants, certainly in the UK, have gone. Um, everything, every penny we spend in terms of our support for business will have to be under some kind of investment umbrella. Um, we look at, we, we're very open to different approaches. We're looking at revenue share, IP deals, whatever. Um, but we, you know, the, the days of grant funding are gone. You know, uh, as I said, in terms of sectoral support, the, the, you know, we're pretty much it. There are no, there's no other national agency around for the creative industries in England at the moment. Um, so in terms of the key markets, and it's really interesting, as I said, sitting here in the audience listening to a lot of these, because, um, again, like the last speaker, we're really looking for sort of opportunistic opportunities in major, large markets around cr cross-platform content. Um, we're very interested in things like gaming and, and uh, the broad sort of spectrum across the road, console, mobile, TV, Broadcast is a major focus for us, but we want to kind of recognise that broadcast in, its, in itself is just one market, and some of the companies that we want to work with actually have loads of op different opportunities across business to business, healthcare, and the, uh, the presentation from Tunstall was really interesting to us as well. And the public sector, and linking to the speaker we've just had around things like smart cities, um, that's a massive opportunity to us as well. We work on the basis, and I guess we sell to those large organisations the concept of this o open innovation model. So we're not just talking to the large organisations like the BBC and Channel 4 and lots and lots of other people and large public sector bodies as well, out of some kind of corporate social responsibility. We're actually talking to them with an angle around you're going to get better products and services if you develop with an SME community in mind rather than if you develop these things in-house. And that's following on from people like TSB have sort of pioneered sort of open, open innovation approach and... It's absolutely the model we want to say. And as I said, I'll probably stress this on every slide, it's an investment basis, we don't do grants, so it's not free cash. But we look to co-invest, 
and we're working with sort of major organisations as well to kind of almost um, safeguard our investment, I suppose. So the Times of Progr the typical programme we're looking at is something where you've got maybe an 18 to 24 month gap in terms of real market development. So we're looking at, BBC is a good example and I'll use, they're looking at various children's developments out of Salford now, so Blue Peter and Garden and everything else is up in Salford now, right outside the tram stop. But they're looking at, okay, what are, what are our children's propositions going to bring us in 18 to 24 months? What is it we, we, what, where do we think they'll be? And actually more interesting for us from a commissioning perspective from the Beeb is they really don't know where they want it to be, but they, don't, they know it won't be like it is today. And actually part of the engagement with the smaller companies that they're looking to get is the shape of what those things could be. Because purposefully these briefs are left very open. So the brief to the audience of SMEs is, it's like this today, we think it's going to go in this direction and it's the kind of belly vision, you know, the whole principle of, of how kids consume TV, particularly from the children's perspective and BBC, but that's only one of the, uh, one of the channels we're working with. It's cross-platform, so it's a kind of ubiquitous approach, but it's very much complementary content. There's a good example, and actually we're partnering with a company called Conquer in the northwest from Liverpool, came out of um, Mersey TV, Line Pictures, so, you know, Hollyoaks, Brookside, all that sort of stuff. They've done a lot around Hollyoaks. I don't know how many Hollyoaks viewers we've got in the room, but Hollyoaks have, have really developed a fantastic range of cross-platform sympathetic content, so you, you, know, you use a smartphone, and it's not an iPlayer type, just replicated platform. It's complementary stuff, it's backstory, it's texting, it's a lot more, you know, it's a more sort of holistic offer. So when you go back to the TV programme, actually you've learned a huge amount more about those characters, and it drives traffic back to the TV show, the core offering as well. Um, we're also looking in a government space around things like service delivery and, and I guess in the UK uh, the, the problem we've got, and it's rather like the healthcare issues that uh, a colleague from Tunstall was talking about this morning, we've got this legacy of face-to-face -face telephone based services. It's not like some of the countries that we see exploding in terms of digital delivery where they're kind of doing this for, for fresh. They haven't, they haven't got to base themselves on these legacy models and trying to move from it. But again, we're looking at prototype and development funding that link to things like the NHS, talking to a number of different charities as well, and public sector organisations like local authorities around how do they deliver future services for their population. So I'm very interested in the kind of, you know, the, 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 the white space applications, that mobile metering kind of thing. Um, and, we, and we will put prototype funding into those kind of things. And we're working with Bristol, Leeds, Sheffield and Birmingham around that, that kind of development. The, the model, 